Good evening and welcome to another one of my segments of A Verse a Day Keeps Islam Away. Today I would like to talk about peace, the most important concept in Islam. We are told day after day, minute after minute, after hour after hour that Islam is a religion of peace, that as-salam, peace, is the foundation upon which Islam is actually built. So I decided to look into the Quran and see how many times the word peace, as-salam, uh, appears in there. Uh, the word salam, uh, now keep in mind, the whole religion is based on peace and salam. Now, the, uh, apparently, it only exists six times in the entire Quran. So let's go through them real quick and see what about as salam does each of these sections have. The first one I'm going to go to is uh, 494, Surah Nisa, verse number 94. And this is where it talks about, <clears throat> O you who believe, when you go to war in the name of Allah, make investigation and do not say to anyone who offers you peace that, <clears throat> that you are not a believer. Do not seek goods of this world, blah, 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 but with Allah there's an abundant gains. You too were such, blah, 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 blah. What I'm trying to show in this verse right here is, yes, it does mention peace. However, it is not the Muslim making the peace. It is saying when you go and fight and wage war in the name of Allah and somebody comes up to you and offers you peace, do not say, hey, you are a non-believer. Okay, let's move on. The next one I want to go to is um, <clears throat> Surah Maida, the Quran 5, verse 16. And apparently, uh, even though it talks about as salam however, in this verse... It, Salam comes in the meaning of safety and not peace. So that doesn't even count. Next one I want to go to. Actually, I'm going to skip the next two. Next one I want to go to is Surah Maryam, uh, Al Quran 19, verse number 33. I actually would like to start with verse number 31. It will kind of make a little more sense. Um, and he has made me blessed wherever I may be, and he has enjoined me with, with prayer. And as long as I live, and dutiful to my mother, and he has not made me insolent, unblessed. He and peace on me on the day I was born, and on the day I die, and on the day I am to be risen back to life. Now, we're talking about someone here who apparently is blessed with peace. Now, is it Muhammad? No. Is it his followers? No. This is actually talking about the prophet Isa. The uh, <clears throat> Jesus, Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus Christ, Yeshua al Messiah, whoever you want to call him. So this is actually talking about the birth of Jesus and talking about him, that he is blessed with peace from the day he's born, from the day he's going to die, the day he's going to be risen from the dead. That's where the peace is. Let's move on to the next place where it talks about peace in the Quran, and that is in Surah Ta'ha, uh, Quran 20, verse number 47. And right here it talks about... <clears throat> So, go you both to him and say, Surely we are two, two apostles of your Lord. Therefore, send the children of Israel with us and do not torment them. Indeed, we have brought to you communication from your Lord and peace is on him who follows the guidance. Do not harm our children. Let my people go. Yeah, you can kind of see where I'm going with this. Um, and peace will be upon you if you follow what the Lord has said. And actually, the person who said this is talking about Musa, uh, Moses, talking to Pharaoh, talking to the Pharaoh. So again, does this, is this even really original to Al-Quran? Not really. This is stolen from Al-Tawrat, from the Torah uh, and Bible, whatever, Al-Tawrat. Uh, moving on to the last one I want to go to before I go back to the previous two is <clears throat> Surah number 59, verse number 23. He is Allah, besides whom there is no God, the King, the Holy, the Giver of Peace, the Grantor of Security, Guardian of all things, Mighty the Supreme, the Possessor of every greatness, glory be to Allah from what they set up with Him. Blah, 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 blah. So again, here it's just talking about some of the attributes of Allah and saying that Allah alone is the Giver of Peace. He is the person who grants you peace, grants you serenity. Alright, so so far, up until now, I have not seen anything talking about be peaceful with your neighbor, be peaceful to other people. 
No. It talks about, actually the only time where it's telling you to be peaceful, actually not even be peaceful, it's when you're waging war in the name of Allah to accept someone else's peace. Now the two verses I want to go back to is Surah Al-An'am, that's Quran number 6, verse 127, which says, <clears throat> They shall have the abode of peace with their Lord, and He is their guardian because of what they did. And I want to go, go to the next one, which is Surah Yunus, uh, which is Quran, verse 10, I'm sorry, Surah number 10, verse number 25, where it says, And Allah invites to the abode of peace, and guides whom he pleases into the right path. Now, what the hell is the abode of peace? In Islam, uh, the world is geographically divided into all these different re into these uh, different regions. Uh, <clears throat> the, you might have heard something call, called Dar Salam. Dar Salam is what they're referring to here as the abode of peace, which is the house of peace. Uh, Dar es Salaam is anywhere in the world that is a Muslim country. It automatically is known as Dar es Salaam because it is a Muslim country. Um, it's also known as Dar al Islam, Dar es Salaam, blah blah blah. Uh, another now now let's go ahead and talk about the rest of the geographical locations around the world. Uh, now a country that where Islam is not the predominant religion or the country does not identify itself as being Muslim, that region is refer referred to uh, as Dar al-Harb. Harb means war. That's the domain of war. That means this is the place where you go and wage war until you bring upon your peaceful religion upon its people. Uh, some of the other places are Dar al-Kufr. And Kufr is like from the Kafar, Kafara, Kafir. Uh, these are the unbelievers. That, that's the areas where, hey, they've had their chance, they've kind of we've tried to fight them, we've tried to convert them to Islam, and they just kind of don't want to convert, so they are kuffar. So that's the Dar al Kufr. Uh, some other places are, <clears throat> some other locations are Dar al Hudna. Al Hudna means domain of calmness. And this is actually where, this is kind of, betwe kind of in between of Dar al Harb and Dar al Salam. Uh, where there was, there may have been at some point wars, but now there's kind of peace. Al Hudna is kind of like um, a little calm, it's a little calm between the two. So it's, it's kind of like an ongoing war, but for the time being, it's rather peaceful to be in. Uh, the next one is Dar al Ahd. Al Ahd is a peace, a peaceful, I mean, a treaty. Um, actually, a covenant. Al Ahd is a covenant. So, um, these are the countries or the geographical locations where Islam is not the majority religion of that area. However, there's a treaty, there's a pact, there's a covenant that says, hey, you know what, you're Muslim, we're going to protect you and it's okay for you to live here and practice your religion freely. That's Dar al Uh The last one I want to go to is Dar al dawa Dar al dawa is the house of invitation, the domain of calling, of um calling someone upon you to invite them and that is locations around the world where the currently as of right now they are not Muslim however they have invited Muslims over and eventually they will become an Islamic state now things have changed since the 7th century or since 9-11 or whatever you want to say um, where right now instead of trying to spread Islam by sword they're trying to, like we're seeing in Europe, they're trying to infiltrate it from within and changing the country based on their democratic laws and making them Muslim from within. Uh, a lot of Muslim philosophers these days view just about most Western countries as Dar Dawah because more, more or less they have invited over the Muslims to come to their countries and to stay there and eventually, sooner or later, they're going to become Muslim. Um, the UK, Sweden, uh, Germany, I'm sorry, you're almost there. That's all I have to say for today. So uh, just to recap real quick, um, even though this is supposed to be um, the religion of peace, I did not see a single place really in here talking about making peace. There's nothing in here that says make peace with people that you know. Even when you're waging war in the name of Allah, it doesn't say make peace. It says accept someone else's peace. Alright, so in this religion, there's no such thing as peace. So please, for the love of Jehovah, for the love of uh, Hare Krishna, please stop saying that this is a religion of peace. Thank you, and you have a wonderful evening. Bye.